Hello and welcome. Uh, we will be developing ASP.NET MVC5 application using code first development approach uh, with the help of Entity Framework 6. Uh, in a previous uh, demonstration, we created a model which is actually our product class having three fields name, price, and brand. And uh, we also created a, uh, a controller and some views. And uh, in product views, we created an add view, display view, in which we were actually passing objects. Like uh, in this case, we were posting uh, using actually post uh, data annotation. And we will then redirecting. In this case, uh, we are not actually writing this object into the database. So we will be using entity framework and uh, uh, with the help of entity framework we will be able to do the database transactions and uh, uh, the additional feature is that all the crude operations will be automatically generated using scaffolding technique in uh, ASP.NET and MVC5 code first uh, development approach uh, why do we call it for code first because in code first we actually write our code which means we write our models and uh, classes and uh, uh, with the help of scaffolding and ASP.NET, uh, MVC5, uh, Entity Framework and ADU.NET, it will be generating database at the back end and uh, with the help of uh, Entity Framework we will be able to do all the database transactions. In additional uh, scaffolding actually generate all the crude operations, basic uh, operation in which we can do the insertion in a database, uh, deletion, updation, uh, and uh, retrieving uh, information from a database. So let's uh, do this with the very basic and uh, single entity. Uh, sometimes I will call it entity, sometimes I will call it model, sometimes I will call it a class. So in this model, that will be eventually would be an entity in the database. So I will actually uh, add a scaffolding item. I will just right click on this control controllers and add. Uh, I can choose to have uh, to add a controller. I can choose to have a new scaffolding item. So I will add a new scaffolding item and this time I will not add an empty controller. I will I would rather use MS5 controller using views and uh, using entity framework. In this, it will actually create razor views with the create, read, update, delete, and a list uh, all the entities on the page. So I will add this, and it's asking that uh, which model class should be used to generate all the views. So I will use product, and definitely I would need a data context. Data context class is actually the class which will be uh, will be which, which will be used to do the database transactions. So we don't have any data context class but I can add a data context class. So let's uh, name it as uh, let's say inventory. Inventory context and add and uh, the controller name is products so our previous controller name was a product controllers and uh, this one is a product and if i just add a product controller it will overwrite previous controller so let's uh, overwrite previous controller So it's uh, actually uh, creating all the views of the product and it will actually add some uh, views over there. So I'm ha having a problem over here, which is that uh, product has no key defined, which means that this product uh, model does not have any any key, which is in case a primary key, which will be created in the database. Keep in mind that entity framework requires that each entity must have a primary key. All right, so we can add a primary key uh, using a key attribute data annotation as well. So I will add uh, 
component model data annotations so it will have it so it will mark this name as a primary key so we have two options either we generate this key uh, make any field as a primary key using a key data annotation or we can just add uh, sorry public integer id id field as a primary key so in this case entity framework will assume that this id is uh, is a is a primary key and it will automatically create this field as a primary key in the database and uh, it will also manage this uh, primary key and will uh, make it as identity colon and it will uh, auto increment uh, it uh, any time whenever we will, we will be doing the transaction so now i will build again so to keep in mind that whenever we do the scaffolding we need if we change the model we need to build our application so build started and succeeded so i will add control so just uh, remove the confusion uh, i think i should better delete this uh, uh, this product views as well all right so add new scaffolding entity framework and product and do we have a context no so inventory and products controller add so it's scaffolding and it's generating uh, controller all the actions of controllers and as well as views you can see that product folder a products folder has been created over here and it has a create css html delete details added and index and similarly you see the products controller has uh, all the actions that actually do actually performing all the database operations so just run this application and see what we get so products so first time it would be a bit slower because it's also generating database um once database file would be generated and that would be a local database file and would be part of this uh, application uh, directory i will show you all right so this is our index page and in index it's actually uh, showing you name price and brand so if i go and see the code uh, in this code it's actually returning db dot db actually our database context which is this file and it has a collection of uh, db set of type products of type product and having name products and uh, this closes so it's actually uh, retrieving a list from the database and uh, it's sending to the view so control mg to shift so it is using i enumerable of uh, type product list and it's actually i treating through the model and uh, displaying uh, name price and brand uh, in this case model is a product and product has name price and brand so that's how it's actually displaying uh, this name price and brand although we don't have any data in the database so let's uh, do some insertion so we have a name let's say for example laptop and the price is uh, something like this and the brand is let's say dell so we create and after creation you can see that uh, in the index it's showing the list and it's also showing some uh, action links in action links we have added details and delete and if we want to edit this record we can go to the edit and we can change let's say for example ibm save 
and we go to the details page in details page it's showing the same fields and uh, so on and in the delete uh, in delete it's uh, actually asking are you sure you want to delete this so if I press delete it's actually deleting this and if I do another insertion let's put on the laptop and the price is something like this and the brand is uh, let's put on HP create and it's actually performing the DB operations so let's see uh, what do we get uh, in the database so I just stop this and uh, in uh, uh, VS Studio 2017 and even in uh, 2013 we have an option to show all files which means we will be able to see the hidden files as well you can see that you have a MDF Microsoft database file over here which is actually in place inside app data and if I double click on this file it will be using server explorer to show you this database so if I double click on this so it's opening this uh, inventory context so it has tables and you can see it has a products table and it has ID name price and brand you have also observed that this ID is not displayed because ID is mainly used to keep the keep the data as a unique and uh, it's uh, for the for the relationships mainly use so that's why you don't see so if I go and see the table definition uh, Visual Studio uh, has a has a smaller version of uh, database management as well you can actually see the database definition over here you can see the data you can do some insert and write some SQL queries as well inside this Visual Studio so you can actually uh, do little bit of uh, database operations over here definitely it's not full-fledged SQL server uh, but it has some uh, some of the uh, features of uh, SQL uh, server and management studio so let's see this uh, product details so it has an ID it has name price and brand and you can see the uh, the database, the, the data, data type in the database is automatically uh, uh, managed and uh, picked up by entity framework and you can actually change that and you can define using your models we will see uh, um, a bit more things um, in, in the models and you can also see the data so show table data so you can see that this is ID this ID is managed automatically and uh, this name price and brand is actually these are the fields that we have created in our um, in our model and same fields are actually displaying on uh, on our page so uh, so that's how actually uh, uh, database is generated and we can do all the database transactions so let's uh, uh, mo do some modifications and uh, uh, do some changes in the in the product let's say for example we have uh, price over here and we can actually use data annotation and to tell that this price how this price should look like and how this price should be so let's run again and see what do we have so slash products So these are the products and we see that it's saying it's showing us a name it's showing price and it's showing brand if we if we want to change this how this text should look like let's say for example if I create new and it's saying name uh, price and brand and, and the price unfortunately we can go in like minus 1000 and it has no issue with this and uh, similarly we can actually add this product without a product name and without a brand name and if we want to enforce that uh, these fields should be filled then definitely we want to do some changes like for example uh, to make this field as a required field that is something to do with the database which means that in database this this field or this column should be a required column 
so that if uh, if that user does not fill this field uh, you should uh, prompt a user to enter this field and and your uh, front end uh, which is a page should not allow to do any insertion similarly in price field although it's an integer and can be negative but you can control this using your uh, models and and with the data annotation so in this section i will actually describe you how we can use data annotations to 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 control the behavior of your application and how this application will pick up things from the data annotations and whenever we do the changes in the database uh how do we do this because the database is already generated right so i am going to change start with the required so required data annotation has uh, multiple options one is that error message the so error message is let's say product name is required so if you don't specify error message it will be showing default error message like this field is a required field and similarly let's say for example a product cannot have without a price so i will add just a required data annotation and similarly with the brand let's say for example uh, you say that brand is uh, should not be required so just keep it like this and uh, Uh, these are actually the things that uh, you can uh, do using the data data annotation so required data annotation is something that will be changing your database right so if i right if i build again or just uh, i just want to show you uh, the problem that we are going to get over here so uh, the products so over here we have uh, a bit inconsistency uh, between our model and our database so it's suggesting me that you should do uh, code first migrations in this migrations we need to migrate our uh, uh, database based on our uh, current model so for this we need to open package manager so you need to launch packet manager console and you need to enable enable migrations we are not getting intelligence i don't know why so we need to enable migrations on a uh, context right so we need to enable migration once uh once it's enabled we can do add migrations so we need to specify a name of migration i can zoom it a bit like this so we need to specify a name of our let's for example uh, product updated so product model is actually updated so it will actually add migrations and now we need to finally update database cannot insert the value null into column name uh, actually null already exists in the database and uh, we are actually adding a uh, uh where is our model in product we we are saying that this is a required field which means we are saying it's not null so a data already exists in the database which is actually null so this refresh so we have null we have null so quick thing is that we just delete this one this record so just delete this record and right 
so now we do the migration let's 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 close this so now we do the migrations so update database So now it's updated and uh, we want to go and see the structure what's been updated. So before it was allow null. So now allow null is disabled from name and price, right? So now we are going to run this. Slash products. And if you create new one, and if I want to create, it's saying the product name is required, the price field is required. So in this case, it's saying product name is required. So if I go and see the model, it's coming from here, product name is required. But in the case of price, I did not write any error message. So this is a default error message, the price field is required. So to have a custom message, you can use an error message over here. And if you want to use the default, then you just put like that. So product is, it's a mouse and the price is again we can have a negative price and we have a minus which is actually uh, not logical right although it's integer so uh, how do we do this with the with the with the price we can have a range data annotation and in this uh, we can I uh, use uh, this overloaded method and I can say that price can be let's uh, let's assume that some some somebody is offering just for free so so the, so the minimum can be zero and the uh, maximum what could be the maximum so it's very hard to decide what could be the maximum price of a product in an inventory system so we can use int dot max value in this case and we can also use error message over here let's add an error message uh, please enter uh, suitable price all right so in this case I am not going to do any migrations, right? So I will just run this. Slash products, just go directly to the add. Oh, sorry, it's not add, it's create. So in the, in the create view, we are going to, let's create this. So by field is required, one thing is it's required. And another thing is it cannot be negative. So minus 100, we're saying, please enter suitable price, right? So we can uh, do this. So now the question is that I did not do any migration that how, how this view knows that uh, this price cannot be negative, right? So uh, there are some type of uh, uh, data annotations uh, which are uh, affecting your database and there are some type of data annotation which are actually not affecting your database. It has to do something with the view and uh, uh, it is actually managed automatically. So uh, just because of, uh, uh, let's for example, just because of this uh, validation summary and validation message for it's actually uh, validating your uh, entity uh, or your model uh, at, at, at the view over here. So it has nothing to do with this, uh, nothing to do with your uh, databases. Similarly, if we add another database, uh, another data annotation, let's say for example, uh, 
display and in display I want to use this data annotations to see that uh, this should be a product name so in the database it would be the name field but when you are displaying this uh, on your web pages uh, using uh, display uh, field which is which we have seen in previous video as well so display name for will actually pick up that display name and will be using that so product name would come over here like this so if I save this now it has nothing to do with the database it has to do something with the uh, data annotations and that that how uh, how I want this field to look like on uh, on a page so if I run this slash products So now you see it's a product name now and the amazing thing is that this name field would be treated as a product name on all the views so you see that if I go in edit it's saying product name if I go and create new it's saying product name so which means that if you change your business logic in this case you are actually just deciding that uh, what should be displayed on a page um, you just change at one place so if you have been working in any other technology you have to go and change everywhere if later on um, your uh, team lead decides that uh, uh, this name should be actually product name and let's say for example later on you decide that this price should be actually uh, displaying product price and this brand should be displaying like brand name something like that so you just modify your model uh, using data annotation similarly if you think that new field need to be added you just modify your model and you do the migration right so let's add another field and uh, see how it works so I need to stop this so let's add one more thing is public integer quantity so when we are adding a price we also add a quantity and we say that it's also a required field and this quantity must be positive so this time just keep it default right and uh, we can also uh, choose to have this uh, price uh, as a double that's for example if we are uh, talking about in euros and in dollars like one product can have uh, uh, 25 dollars and 50 cents so we just change this to double and we change this to uh, double lot uh, max value so we can do that so let's uh, do these changes and now we need to do uh, uh, our migrations are already enabled right so you can see over here that uh, we have different migrations over here this is uh, actually the initial migration and then we have a product updated migration and uh, if nothing works so easiest way is just I delete this migrations table I delete this database and I actually do the things from the start so so migration are actually important to keep your previous data and do the modification so let's add migration so this time I will say that uh, quantity added quantity field added upgrade database also it is suggesting me that uh, I need to re-scaffold uh, uh, because uh, this field which is actually quantity would not be show up uh, because uh, if you, so, you see in details we have a name price and brand we don't have quantity over here similarly in all other uh, research pages which are actually generated using scaffolding 
would not contain this quantity so i need to rescaffold actually so i will add and i will do the scaffolding i will overwrite using product model and the name is products so it will just overwrite so let's do the products so default value is 0 in this case uh, it's already assigned so let's for them added this and let's have minus 10 save now between 0 and this u very big number so we can actually have a custom message then so let's follow 10 save edit and we have 50 and price is actually let's, um, let's say 250 so this is price this is quantity and then we are going to create this again we have a quantity and we have a price and let's add another item which is charger which is 450 and the quantity is 100 and the brand is Dell right so we have uh, these all of these and this quantity is over here we can go and see the details we go back and we let's suppose we delete this and it's asking and then it's done so this uh, uh, demonstration is working with uh, with a single entity and a single model so what about we have a relationship let's say for example brand has uh, its own uh, fields let's say brand has a name brand has a has an address has a phone number has a country has a city and so on and in that case we will have a product and we need to have a brand id over here and the brand entity or the brand model should have its own features so how do we create a complex uh, code first uh, applications in asp.net mvc uh, i will demonstrate this in uh, next video